Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 where we've, uh, we're out on a brand new planet. Yes, this is... Uh, where on earth am I? This is the new planet of uh, Talos. Talos, that's where I went, I remember. Because I had I, I was having a bit of a look at the processing for making the... Um, for, do, for doing all the processing of the beryllium. And it occurred to me that I had basically had a couple of choices. I could either go to Kalidas Asteroid Belt, which looks kind of like this. There's a massive patch here of a Jillian beryllium available and so I could go out here I could start mining from that patch and start and, 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 and do stuff from there but if I did that then I would have to do all of the processing out here in space and if you want to process stuff like that out in space well let's have a let's have a quick look at that so if we look up if we look up beryl then we'll see that if you need to you need to process that with sulfuric acid to make the beryllium over so there's there's this step then there's this step then there's this step then there's this step to finally get to the ingots and so they and all of the all the space machines that do stuff. Well, you, uh, industrial furnace and actually a thermodynamics facility is about the same size as industrial furnace. But all the way back here, biochem facilities much bigger, much more expensive than chemical plants, more complicated, more faff to put together. And just generally, all and, and none of these steps would then be able to have productivity modules, and we wouldn't have an un, a genuine, a genuinely unlimited supply because, well, in space, um, you can't do core mining. So I decided at the beginning of the last uh, stream that I was going to instead, instead of going out to uh, Kalidas Asteroid Belt One, where there is a supply of beryllium, I was going to go to Talos, which is a beryllium planet. Now, oh, out here, what what are the numbers like? So it's 114, 367, 359 versus. 1,000 for the free... Yeah, okay, so those patches are much bigger, richer, and frequenter. Um, although they, the, the frequency is probably reduced somewhat by the big gaps between rocks. So... It feels, but however, the patches are going to be much, much, have much, much more in them. But I'm not really planning to use the beryllium patches. I'm planning to set up mining drills, core mining drills like this, pull out the core fragments like this. And so there's some advantages of this. One of them is that this is a planet with all of the resources on it, and if we're digging up core fragments, we're going to have all of the resources required to use Mark's standard. Here is my machine that makes your core, your uh, delivery cannon capsules from. Um, from core fragments. So the core fragments, as, as, as you've seen before on other planets, we're going to be pulverizing the beryllium core fragments down into uh, beryllium, core or beryl, I think it's called at this stage, core fragments and stone. Uh, we'll pass the stone and the core fragments down here and deal with them appropriately down here. And so we go through the process of making it all up. Now, Ma uh, Mark has made some improvements to the, uh, or at least some changes to the um, to, to this machine. Uh, and, and now we, we've got a delivery cannon chest in the middle here. And this is associated with, back on Norvis, We've got these banks of delivery cannons connected up to a dish. So using these, I can I can request certain input things, and these are the re these are the resources that are required in order to make the actual delivery cannon capsules. So he's also got a machine here that's making delivery cannons and putting them into uh, in, into a tray. Uh, and so as you can see, we're pulling the, the this station is pulling in heat shield tiles, low density structures, copper and uh, explosives. Those being made into delivery cannon capsules here, but also being made available to all of the other planets. So at the moment there's only two of them, but eventually we could we could theoretically send these out to any of the other planets and top up any of the requirements they need. Now, that's probably a little bit unnecessary for a lot of the planets. However, it does mean that if we decide we want to put in an additional input, so from here, for example, or more likely on uh, Taishakutan, if we decide that this this actually this this is a bit pathetic, we're not getting the um, the the uh, uh, vulcanite through quickly enough, which we're absolutely not at the moment because something has jammed. So we'll need to look into why why we've got why we got why, why we have an excess of jam, and it's because we have too, we have too much too much raw rare metal, and that's because there isn't enough rare metal being used on over on Norvis. So we're going to deal need to deal with that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, find a way of shipping a bit more of this rare metal out to, back out to Norvis and just get rid of it because this warehouse is full. So that's a problem, but that's an uh, um, that's an unrelated problem. So, uh, but anyway, what, what this means, what, what we could do if we wanted to, is pull in a lot more vulcanite from, from some of these mine patches. Get rid of the pollution. Uh, we don't care about it out here. So, for example, I could tap into these patches of vulcanite down here. There's 12 million, 23 million, six, seven, almost 7 million. All of that. Get the rail system upgraded a bit here. Start bringing the vulcanite in as, um, as vulcanite ore, drop it off in probably actually this station and rejig the belts a little bit, and then feed that around to more processing facilities over here, or maybe even just, yeah, probably more processing facilities going out wherever, and then pump that through. <clears throat> 
and then we'd have a lot more Vulcanite coming through, we'd be able to ship more of it out. And that would save us from having to go to Agnea, but it would mean we'd be using mine, uh, we'd be using mines and we'd be reliant on stuff being brought in from uh, from Norvis for the delivery cannons. And we'd have to rebuild the system a bit, because currently it doesn't have a delivery cannon chest in it, so it can't actually receive stuff, it's just going to be sitting here going, Welp. So we need we need we need to redesign re rebuild this a bit and and, and and do some shenaniganry around that, um, which is not ideal but also not exactly not particularly difficult. So this has been incredibly useful already because uh, when I got out here I realised as is always the case I flew out I brought I brought out a couple of rockets full of stuff so we had all all these bits and pieces I needed here for make, getting the power up and running and as you can see by the pollution we are oh dear we're um, we seem to be actually releasing some pollution that's unfortunate um, it's supposed to be being cleaned up by all of these um, all, all of these uh, filters or air filter purifiers along here so. I'm not quite sure why that's sneaking away. Maybe I've messed up my chunk alignment or something. But no, they all everything that's pollucing, pollucing production. Yes, there we go. There's some good Englishing. Um, is inside is inside this chunk, and it's all being cleaned up from it. Maybe, maybe these maybe these scrubbers aren't able to keep up. I I don't know. That's something we're going. I'm going to have to have a look into because that is we should not be getting pollution spreading out from here. That's bad, TM. We've also got uh, so we've also got some um, pollution scrubbers up here by the uh, core mining drill because they're really really dirty. So we've got these systems that are, in theory, yes, they are going to be cleaning up the pollution generated by this. Um, we've run out of the uh, clean filters in here, so so the filters are going to be a little bit of a problem with this system. So initially, well, the uh, the plan the plan was quite good at the start. I thought, well, I'll just drop in a uh, I'll drop in a bunch of filters in here. They'll go around, and by the time they're all dirty, I'll be able to clean them out again. Um, and then I realised that in order to clean filters out, you actually need you need a, uh, a filtration plant. Uh, so I so I then started trying to scrape together the ingredients I needed for that, which is why there's a tiny little iron, very very sad looking looking little iron mine out here that's uh, digging up decent amounts of ore. To be fair, and we've been grabbing that, and that's why there's also a couple of uh, smelteries here that are then trying to make iron and steel. So yes, I needed to make that building because I forgot to take one with me. After I'd built it, I then discovered that actually, it's this this machine here is the one that does the actual cleaning of the filters. And for a little while, I could have just shoved all the dirty water into tanks and forgotten about it for a while, because you don't absolutely have to clean the water as soon as you've made it, as soon as you've as soon as you clean the filters, and you actually only need assembly machines for those. And I had lots of them, so I felt a little bit silly about that. But we are at least at least this means I've now got a, a self-contained system. In the future, I will potentially put in a bit more power across here, but I will at some point put in a system to pull off the um, pull off the filters and bring them up to here, and then probably off to all of the other um, mining core mining areas as well. So we're going to need to keep them thoroughly supplied with mining drill uh, with with filters, because this planet is not as safe as Taishakut. And as you can see, there's a number of biters out here. Um, I've dealt with a couple of the small bases already, just to make sure I've got this area liberated. And I've started from the, right in the centre of the planet, which is why I've got this sort of starter lake here. But we decided that it was okay to use that because there is a, a finisher lake up here as well. It's absolutely massive, so it's not cheating to use that patch of water. However, this area up here is a lot a lot biterier, and so I didn't really fancy going in and uh, trying to take this one out with the, with the simple basic hand weapons that I've got at the moment. Um, the lightning gun is, is great, but whilst I'll be able to fly through here and probably be able to take out nearly all of these uh, spawners in, in just a single, uh, in maybe a couple of passes, I would then be being chased by a lot of these green biters, and they take forever to kill with the uh, with the weaponry I've got with me at the moment, because they're kind of tough, um, and they don't really seem to care very much about being hit by lightning, so you have to take them out with the bullets, and that just takes a while. And then there's another nest up here, and then another one here, and you, it would, you, you can see the problem. And this is why I decided it'd be much more sensible to build down here, where things are a bit friendlier and a bit safer. Uh, despite the uh, the friendliness and safeness of this area, I have put in a notification wall all the way around the edge here. It's um, a row of a row of laser turrets that will let me know if anything unfortunate is going to happen. I do also have some wall as well, so spiky wall. But the hope is that by the time this system is set up and properly running, we won't have to worry about biter attacks because probably significant biter attacks because we'll be absorbing all of the pollution we're creating. Um, however, that's going to require me to either ship in or create, probably create because these, these filters do eventually die. I'm going to need to make a lot more of the filters. And the filters take some rel a relatively large amount of well, stuff. Uh, they're in here? Here. Here. There we go. So it's coal, plastic and steel. Um, and now you do produce a little bit of excess coal when you're making uh, when you're making the, these um, 
things. It's a very, very small amount though. So it's going to be quite difficult to use that for making the filters, especially as it's also required for the plastic which is needed for the filters. The steel is less of a problem because you do produce quite a lot of excess iron ore, uh, which is being turned into iron plates here to be sh eventually be shipped off to Norvis in a, um, from a delivery cannon. Same sort of general idea going on over here. But yes, it's all a bit... It's, it's, it's going to require quite a lot of raw resources, specifically coal. Uh, for, there is a coal patch here, so we can get some coal. And I probably will end up just digging up some more coal from this patch and getting that pumped into the system just to make sure we already always have enough to make the filters um, and, every, and any extra plastic we need. But yeah, it's all, turning, it's, it's all becoming a little bit more complicated than I was originally hoping. So that's how it goes, I suppose. I mean, building up building up a slight, slightly higher complexity system is not going to be too difficult. There is another patch here that I can get some more barrel core seam fragments from. But at the moment, I've got more than I know what to do with. Up here, we have, as you can see, this is backed up completely. Um, I've, I've not got very far with the processing of the barrel. So next time, I'm going to be putting in lots and lots of chemical plants, lots and lots of other things down here. Look, looking into making a better system for doing the... Um, doing the the uh, the filtering and ideally I might try and get like Mark had on the other on the other planet I'll try and get a belt of, um, of filters just going all the way around all the way around the outside of here cleaning everything up making sure that we've we, we're not letting any pollution out into the surrounding area and I think that's going to be very worthwhile because we don't want the biters to come look at come, come over and investigate so this area is not going to be big enough. I'm going to need to expand it, but this is just sort of let's get a perimeter established, uh, which is why I haven't put any walls down. I haven't put I've just put a quick, a quick slap down of the laser turrets. This will probably need to be expanded. This is going to need to be a lot bigger as we get more and more advanced, more and more um, core fragments coming through. But I'm not going to worry about that yet. I want to get one of my little proof of concept builds up and running first, see how that gets on, and then and then expand it a bit from there, and then probably clear off and, and go to a different planet and do something else. So with this being quite a big planet, there are a lot of core seams available on it. So my plan in the longer term is probably to go out and get some more of these. But for now, I'm not too worried about that. I think these two are going, these two are going to be enough to get me started. And then once we've got started and we've found out what the production rate is like, we'll see where we go from there. There is one other thing worth noting on this planet. And that is that there is a pyramid on it. So maybe I'll go over and investigate that pyramid at some point. Because, you know, a, a, a tier 9 module would be quite nice. Assuming that's assuming it's still the same sort of challenge in, in uh, 0.7. Now, the risk is that I might go in here and discover... A, that I, I don't have... <laughs> in, in my previous run-through, I would basically deal with these by running in, firing off three or four nukes, and then... And then... Uh, and then um, uh, what do you call them? It uh, energy uh, lightning gunning everything else. That's not going to be so easy this time because the um, because the I don't have any nukes, so I'll have to go in there and use the lightning gun for everything. And the problem with these is if you go in and attack them and then run away, all the biters cluster around the entrance and you can basically never get back in again. It's um, problematic. So um, I'll give it a shot, see what happens. Maybe we'll be early enough on in the game that there won't be too many biters in there. I don't know how that works. We shall find out. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. So yes, this is Talos. Welcome to Talos. I, I, I Finally, big supplies of, of stuff down here for building up every, hopefully everything else that's going to be needed down here. Uh, yes. And on the similar subject, Mike has been off to Kothar, which is a very familiar name because I had a planet called Kothar with Iridium on it in my, uh, in my 0.5 playthrough. And so Mike has found a planet called Kothar with Iridium on it for our 0.6 playthrough. He's in a very similar position to me, I believe, because yes, this is again a hostile planet. Um, he's not been worrying so much. He's gone in and approached things in a slightly different way. So once again, he's gone in, he's got the free power up and running. He's slapped all this down. He's got it, he's, he's got it built up and, um, and, and generating electricity, basically. But and uh, oh, he does have some. Um, he does have some uh, some thousand uh, filters. So he's okay for filter. Kind of okay for filters in here. But he's obviously produced a load of pollution before he got the filtration systems up and running. So he's he's not been being quite as careful about that because he's more into doing the combat than I am. Um, and as you can see down here, um, bits of combat have been happening because there are biter nests that are absorbing pollution. And yes. He's also started um, planning and building up his uh, railway system, which is, again, fair enough. He's, I say, doing things in a slightly different order. He's got, and, and he's got his coronal mass ejection uh, defences built up here. So this is the same as the one on Taishkut and the one on, actually, the one on Norvis. You, you've seen this sort of thing before. We've got um, some boilers over here that are generating steam. That's being pumped into these tanks. The tanks fill up with steam gradually over time. And then if there's a, if there is a coronal mass ejection, the steam all gets dumped out through these turbines, powers the umbrella defence, and that keeps everything happy, keeps it running, and ensures 
ensures that the planet is, is well protected against the against the incursion. He, I think he's also no, he hasn't done his asteroid defences yet. I don't think unless they're tucked in here somewhere. No. Um, so yeah, he's um, but he's he, oh, he has they're across here. So he's he's done a similar. He's doing the same sort of thing, but in, but it's quite interesting to see him doing it in a rather different order. He's not even got a perimeter wall set up around his around his base yet. So. Uh, yeah, this is going to be um, it's going to be interesting to see the two coming together in, in slightly different ways. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing seeing how this goes. Um, who screams blue murder more often? Mike has done slightly better than me at remembering all the things he needs to take out. I think he's only had one rocket delivered so far, and he's had a bit of a James May moment with tidying all of his um, spanners into different drawers and giving them and giving them all names, uh, which is. I mean, it's a good idea when you want to run over there and grab a handful of stuff, but I tend to do most of my, uh, I tend to do a lot of my building with construction bots, and, and if it's something fiddly, then I'll, I'll get the logistics bots to bring me the stuff, so it doesn't matter quite so much to me, but he's, yes, he's definitely gone a bit James May about all of this. <laughs> So yes, it will be interesting to see how this goes. Um, he's also obviously set up next to a lake. He's on the on, on a corner of the planet. I think he's, looking at the size of these nests, has he got a lower threat level to me? Yes, he's got seven percent. I've got thirty-three percent. So that actually might be part of the reason why I'm worrying a lot more about pollution than he is. My planet is quite a lot more dangerous. Uh, but still, the, the, the same sort of principles apply. If you've got any biters, you need to, you need to make sure you're defending, and, and they're not going to come ac come over and eat all of your stuff because then then you'll be sad. So, yeah, there's, I'd say, very much the same sort of thing going on over here. I should probably touch on how we got at, how, how we got ourselves into this mess as well, because that was mildly interesting. So, of course, we, we all started on, well, no, Mike start, Mike was down on Norvis at the, um, before, at the beginning of the run, and I was in Norvis orbit, so just, just above him. Um, so he hitched a lift up on in, the, in one of the cargo rockets that are bringing all of the stuff up into Norvis orbit, so that's... Um, these ones, these ones here, uh, these gradually um, gradually fill up with with well with stuff as you can see, and when they get to, when they're when they're filled up, then they take off. So we we put Mike in there as well because he's uh, basically cargo. Shipped him up into the asteroid belt, and we then, if I jump over now to um, if I lower that down so I can actually see where I want to look. If we look at Taurus orbit, we will see hopefully uh, <laughs> somewhere in here is the misfortune. Here we go, that one. Uh, this is also well, where are you? This is also Talos orbit, I think. I uh, sort of almost don't care. Right. So the point, the point is, we we we, we got into the we got into the um in, in, into the spaceship, or I got into the spaceship because it was up there. He flew up in the rocket, got into the spaceship as well. He didn't even bring a um, a life support system, which shows an imp an impressive level of bravery. But he was able to hold his breath for long enough to get out of the cargo capsule into the spaceship, and then the other end out of the spaceship into the cargo capsule. Because then on the way over. I dropped him off um, in orbit around Kothar. He then, and the, he, so he was then able to fly down in a um, in a cargo capsule to land on Kothar. Put down the um, put down the, the rocket landing pad, and then 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 summon his first rocket in the sensible, safe way. Basically, in the way that allows you to put down the uh, the landing pad without having to have a rocket crash land there. Which tends to, firstly, it puts you down in the wrong place, and secondly, it tends to just scatter stuff all over the place. So you don't really want that to happen. Once I dropped him off there and uh, he'd stopped panicking about my flying, uh, I then flew over to Talos and did exactly the same thing again, which is why I was expecting the um, the, the uh, ship to be in orbit around this planet. But um, the fact that I can't see it is slightly concerning, but we'll, that, that could be a problem for another time. Mike's future plans are going to be very, very similar to my future plans. It's going to be get Iridium mining up and running, get the processing going, get stuff starting to be shipped out by delivery cannon, and try not to get our faces eaten. Fairly standard stuff. Um, as I say, he's, he's doing things in a slightly different order, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't see that that's, a, I, I don't see that as being a problem. Um, which of us has got further? I wouldn't like to say because he's got all these defences up and running, um, and he started specking out a train system, a rather oversized train system, if, if, uh, to be honest, based on the amount of iridium I expect us to be using in the short term. But we'll call it future proofing instead. Um, but he hasn't got his capsule set, uh, set up running, and he hasn't put down, put down any um, any core mining drills yet. So I, just, I assume he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Uh, so yeah, that's the basic, basically the same sort of idea, but on a different planet. Speaking of different planets, while I'm, while yes, while I'm, while I'm talking about different planets, let's let's go over and have a look at uh, Njord, because this is the one that Tristan's been out working on, and he spent a fair amount of time out here, uh, again doing the same sort of thing. Now, now bear in mind he's had an extra um, an extra session on 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 this planet, so he's he's going to be about three or four hours ahead of us. So he has done basically the same sort of idea. He set up the uh, the. the Three power systems up here, like this. He set up. He set up his coronal mass ejection defences. He's probably set up some um, meteor defences around here as well. I don't see them, but I imagine he's probably done it. Uh, is that them in there? No, it's not them in there. And then he's gone on. He's gone in and put down the um, the, the system for making turn, turning core fragments into uh, in, into delivery cannon capsules. 
Then over here, we've got uh, we've got a stream of copper coming in because um, he set up a copper mine because apparently he needed copper. So um, sure, <laughs> and copper tends to be the thing we're most short of in these um, in, in these systems. So it makes sense to, set, to get that set up. Uh, what does he need that for? Okay, this is, oh, so he needs copper cable in order to do some of the um, in one of the holmium processing steps. So over here we are we are doing the, the normal thing where we're bringing in the uh, the holmium core fragments, which are being pulverized down into holmium ore, core fragments, and stone. The stone and the core fragments are being taken away for disposal, or at least just taken taken away to be potentially used elsewhere, should we say? Then we're doing the process of the step here where you pulverize the holmonite again to get actually to get the crushed holmonite and the stone. Stone again taken away. The crushed holmonite is then I don't know what goes on here. Processed in some way. Um, okay, so we're bringing in, we're bringing in hydrogen chloride and crushed holmonite and anion exchange beads, and but then passing all of that out again over here. We're getting there's a chance we'll get some holmium chloride and we'll prop there's and there's a reasonable chance we'll get either the holmium holm we'll get, then we'll probably get either the holmonite or the exchange bees back again and we can reuse those and there's some dirty holmium water produced as well. So that's all being dealt with here. We, he's got a, a system down here that's then dealing with the next step. So you're taking in the holmium chloride. Apparently you then need to copper cable that I, I, I don't know what's going on here, but it happens in a centrifuge. So apparently it's some sort of spinny device uh, and that produces. Holmium powder, which you can then cook in the presence of vulcanite, uh, down into the actual ingots. I'm uh, sorry, into fluid, into liquid holmium, which you then you then condense into ingots in the presence of sand. Jeez, and then that can all be passed out over here, where eventually there'll be a um, a delivery cannon system set up over here to take that back off to wherever it's needed, uh, which currently is um, Norbis Norbis orbit, as we've talked about before. So, jeez, that's quite that's quite a lot of stuff. Over here, what's this? This is this is making anion exchange beads, which requires nitric acid, steam, cryonite, and plastic. Gee, there's a lot, lot to this. No wonder he's been taking. No, no wonder it's taken him uh, two streams to to not actually finish it. There's this, there's a lot of this. And then up here, ah, oh, yes, up here we're making um, uh, we're making ma making. Oh, this is electrolyzing water and sand into chlorine and hydrogen, which can then be to um, which can then. Oh, I see. Then then. Okay, he hasn't finished this bit. Because then we can then turn the chlorine and the hydrogen into the hydrogen chloride that's needed for this step. Um, and I think the dirty water up here... Dirty holmium water and iron... Releases... So what's this doing? This is taking in anion exchange beads and dirty holmium water. Oh, and sometimes using... Okay, so that's... And producing crushed holmonite, giving you some of the water back and giving you some stones. So that's, that's a bit of a tangled process but okay that's another thing that's going to use the anion exchange and anion exchange beads by the looks of it so that's going to be fun um i'm not sure he's actually feeding them in over here oh um, no i don't know they're going up here right um this is a complicated process there's a lot of there's a lot of things going in in different directions here i should probably draw a diagram um but this is yes this is all going to then carry on to being that what was going to yeah he's got a core mining drill down here that's bringing up those core fragments as we discussed he can have more of those as required there's a nice oil patch here which he's going to need to tap for the uh, for the oil required for the um this process and for making the plastic for the holmonite bead for the uh, anion exchange beads there's lots of work left to do in this area so he's he's made some progress but still there's there's still still a, still an enormous amount to do and this is this is looking quite complicated i feel like I'm not sure whether I can, I'm not certain about this, but I feel like this is a lot more complicated than it was in 0.5. Um, I think these recipes have been made a bit more in depth, detailed, and and, and just fiddly, not to put too fine a point on it. Uh, but then I suppose that's a challenge. That maybe actually some of that might be Crastorio too. It's very hard to tell where uh, where the lines blur between the difficulties that are brought in by space exploration and by Crastorio too. So yeah, the Holmium looks like it's going to be a bit of a challenge. We'll find out how, whether there's hidden difficulties in the beryllium processing later when I when I get onto that, and on the iridite processing when uh, when when Mike can, uh, can do that one. So yes, there's lots going on at the moment. We've, we've, we've branched out in three completely different directions and gone out and gone, yeah, we're just going to go out and go crazy and try and get lots of these resources all brought in basically at the same time. And the theory, the, the reasoning behind this is because, as I said in the previous um, previous videos, uh, we are currently wanting to go move towards making space trains. You're not, a brace, you're, space, you're not a space train. And space trains require a lot of stuff. So space railway um, is going to need... Uh, oh, actually, no. It needed, it needs energy science back. Okay, so that's that's the holmium. That's what the holmium's for. I, 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 I exaggerated slightly, but I thought while while Tristan's off getting the holmium, we might as well make a start on some of the other things because we are going to want to look at more exciting stuff like spaceships and elevators and so on in the future. 
and those are going to require more complicated uh, science packs. So we're going to we're going to need a supply of iridite. We're going to need a supply of ber beryllium. We're going to need to just get working on all of that because it's going to it's going to be eh, we're going to need a lot of stuff in the future and. To be honest, there's no point in two of us trying to work on the holmium supply at the same time, I don't think. So, I, the, and the rest of us need something to do. So, we might as well work on these things for a, a little bit of um, a little bit of future proofing and, and and getting stuff ready for for the next steps. And this is kind of what we did in, um, previously with um, when 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 we went out and got vulcanite and, and uh, cryonite at the same time. And that was why it was then so easy to put in um, both of where are they? Both. Both of these science packs, the utility and production science packs, uh, utility and production science packs, get them the right way around, uh, at basically almost exactly the same time because we had, I was doing this one, and all of the stuff that goes into this one basically is the same as the stuff that goes into this one, except that you need cryonite, and and you need to be bringing up these these mod these modules instead. So it's, it was absolutely trivial at this point to go well, we'll just do both of these at the same time. Whereas if I've been playing on my own. I'd probably have gone off and got the maybe I'd have gone off and got the Vulcanite first because I'd have realised I needed that in order to make this science. Then I'd have looked at this one and go, oh, I also need Cryonite, so I'd have had to go off to another planet and start getting working on that one. So having somebody else to to help sort of parallelise that made this this science feel absolutely trivial, which is interesting and uh, slight, somewhat unexpected. But I've talked about that a bit in, in in previous videos, so yeah, I suppose you could you could always go back back and look at those. Well, we're approaching about half an hour of, uh, of video, so I think that's a, probably a reasonable place to stop. We haven't done an enormous amount of this, this well, we've done a lot this this uh, in the last stream. However, there's not an enormous amount to talk about because a lot of it has been going out and getting stuff set up on, on other planets. And a lot of the initial stages of getting stuff, going out to other planets to get stuff set up is filling up the rockets that are going to go out there, where is the spaceport? Um, here is the spaceport. A lot of it is just filling up these rockets with enormous quantities of, well, stuff that we're going to want to ship out to those planets. And that takes a long time because, firstly, it all gets brought over by bot, and bots are kind of slow for distributing stuff. Um, but because it's all end products, so um, all the stuff... All the stuff I shipped out to um, uh, to the other planet, to Talos, uh, it, it was it's all buildings and belts and things like that, and we don't have those on the bus because they're not into, they're not um, they're not raw materials or intermediates. They are actual buildings. So all of that was getting brought over here by bot, which is very very slow, and it's even slower when there's another warehouse up here also requesting massive quantities of stuff because Mike also needs to go off to another planet and take a huge amount of stuff with him. So it was. It was a bit of a mess. It was it was rather foolish for us to both do that at the same time, um, but it sort of ended up falling out that way. So we end, I think we basically spent the first hour and a half just trying to think think of all of the things we were going to need and just trying desperately to get them all into a rocket. So as you can see, the, these are some of the things I forgot. Like I forgot the delivery cannons, which is kind of important. I uh, put the filtration plants in here now in case I need more of them. Uh, I put, got more cliff explosives because you can never have enough of those. I don't know why there's more fast underground belts. I think that might have been me failing with the um, uh, setting up requests. Uh, or maybe not. Oh no, no, it's because they weren't being built fast enough. So I thought, right, I'll go out with what I've got, and then I'll request some more for later, for um, when I uh, uh, to be brought out in the next rocket. So those have actually, um, those have actually now been brought out. And also, I decided I wanted to have quite a lot of these filters. So I've said a thousand of them. To be honest, a thousand, maybe not enough. Maybe I should order more of them. Um, but I am going to start building them out there on the other planet. But that's going to, I think, is going to be a slow process. So you, you can see what I mean. There's, 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 you need to think of all of the things you're going to need out there. And now we can, we do have the system where you can use, uh, where is it? This, this thing, the logistics request manager, where you select something like, uh, like a requester warehouse, like this one. And I'll demonstrate this because it doesn't matter because I'm not going to save. You can then grab a blueprint. So from the game blueprints, we could say, I want this. Um, this, this this system that builds the uh, delivery cannon capsule. So you grab that uh, blueprint, you smack it on there like that, uh, like not like that. Goes away. We'll just put this here for now. Um, then you open up something like you open up a, a a logistics system like this. Then you grab the blueprint. Then you put it here, and then it puts all of those requests into the um, into the in, into that uh, into that machine basically. And so you, you we're now uh, no. And so we're now requesting all of the stuff you need in order to make one of those um, one of those blueprints. So if you've got everything you need blueprinted, great, you can do this. You can request all of the stuff, and you can tell when you're getting all the things you need. So we did this as well with the uh, with the free power system. So we ordered uh, something like ten of those, I think, um, which unfortunately is more than you can fit in a single rocket. So it was a bit of a problem. But in theory, the idea is you then you do this. You request all the stuff you need. It fills up the um, the warehouse with all of the all the bits and pieces. 
who can then just shove it straight across into the rocket and you're ready to go it's easy um so that's that's great and so i we remembered all the stuff we needed for that but then there was endless sort of scratching our heads going so what else do we need for what else do we need to go around that what am i going to need for the um for the ber beryllium processing what am i what what am i going to need for defenses what am i going to need for shipping stuff around how much rail do i need to take all those sort of questions and so you're then just bringing in trying to bring in more and more and more and more stuff and Maybe we were doing a little bit of bouncing ideas back and forth between us, trying to think of the things that we were going to need. Um, and so that made it almost made it even worse, because I'd think of something, and then Mike would also want some of those as well. So, yeah, filling all this up was a bit of a mission, and we still didn't end up with all the stuff we needed, but that's just how these things go. As, you, as, you've, as you've seen from watching me play this game before, I'm not great at remembering all the stuff that's needed. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, the, that was probably the first third of the stream and then after that we then made it out to the other planets and started actually putting stuff together so hopefully next week we'll be able to make some serious progress get everything up and built and, and just, just working really really nicely and maybe even start shipping out some of these some of these materials we shall see have to see how that goes so make sure you come along on uh, on monday to uh, to to, uh, to the uh, to the stream to join join us for that and uh, and well see how see how we're getting on Tomorrow night there'll be another one of these videos because there has been some other stuff done. I just wanted to touch on the three big planetary outposts, but there's quite a few other things that have been messed around, that we've messed around with, and uh, I'm not going. I'm not going to go and point at those and spoiler it uh, for, for now. There are, but there's lots more that's been going on. We also lost a little bit of time at the beginning of the stream because I, see, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but this video is a significantly higher resolution than previous ones. Um, we had some. Um, some performance anxiety, should we say, with the new mo with my new monitor and the game just running at about 20 frames per second, which was not playable. And we've now so we're hopefully solved most of those. Fingers crossed. We'll find out. I guess, but I guess we'll find out on Monday. <laughs> oh dear. Um, also on Wednesday there will be. Well, hang on. Wait. Wait a minute. What, what's what's the date at the moment? We'll, we'll, yes, there will be another. There will be another stream on Monday. There'll be another stream on Wednesday as well when I should be playing Dyson Sphere program, unless I finished it, in which case I should be playing something else. But at the moment I'm just trying to put the the finishing touches on my Dyson Sphere, make get it actually built up and and, and to the point where I'm happy to say yes, I have now finished the game. Um, we've got the uh, cut up update videos at the weekend as you're used to, and often GTA videos on Thursdays when I've uh, had time to make, it, make make lots of them. So lots lots to see, lots to do. Keep make sure you subscribe to the channel and to please check out everything that's on there. Also, while I'm saying things things to check out, also please check out tree4.be. They are the channel sponsor. They will host a server for you for um, Factorio, for Minecraft, for Mindustry, and so on. Uh, lots lots of stuff in there. They're nice and cheap. And if you uh, go on go along and use the code uh, Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get twenty percent off your first month. Sounds good. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the um, for the for the for the smaller details that we've been getting up to, as opposed to the, just the big slapping down um, huge systems on new planets like this. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.